take over a very important initiative that is taken here in Egypt, the uh, very first one of its own right, not only here in Egypt, but also th uh, throughout the whole Arab world, TAFL. TAFL is an initiative taken to develop with the educational process on many levels, uh, and it is supporting the, the UN uh, Sustainable Development Program to develop with education, following uh, its uh, um, aims and following its initiatives. And also uh, is looking forward or in, with an aim or a goal to enforce the Egyptian teachers, mainly English teachers. We're very delighted to have with us here uh, in the studio uh, the founders of TAFL initiative. Uh, uh, of course, ladies first, uh, Mrs. Uh, Basma Abdel Hamid, uh, she's an English and TAFL instructor, and Mr. Mohammed Abu Lainin, a business development and a member of uh, TAFL. And they're going to be uh, talking to us about their initiative, its goals, and the achievements of its uh, initiative, of, uh, this initiative, and many other fronts. So we're very delighted uh, to okay. receive you here, and thank, thank you, you for giving us the opportunities to talk with you about your very important initiative. Your Let honor. me, uh, um, my pleasure. Let me start off with you, um, Mrs. Abdel Hamid. Uh, of course, both of you, or both of you, let me start off with, with both of you. You're in charge of the TAFL initiative. Tell us about uh, the TAFL initiative. What is it and how did you uh, start? Uh, okay, first, um, our initiative, TAFL SHIP. You know, TAFL ship like membership, uh, you know, it ends like this, like a ship going to the sea. Uh, TAFL is uh, an acronym teaching English as a foreign language. Uh, in our initiative, we're trying to help the English teachers mainly mm -hmm. uh, with helping the students learn English in a more effective way than what usually happens uh, in our, you know, you know, like the Middle East in general. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like... Uh, no, we're trying to develop the educational process through uh, concentrating on the most important element in the educational system. Mm -hmm. The educational system has a student, a teacher, curriculum, and educational buildings. Mm -hmm. The most important one here is the teacher. He or she follows, the, follows up with the student. He or she sets the curriculum or at least delivers it in the, in the best possible way. And they can provide the best in, uh, educational environment, even if the facilities of the educational building is not enough. Mm. The teacher is the core, so we, so we decided to develop the educational process through concentrating on the roots of it, which is the teacher. So mm. our initiative is working on the professional development of it. Or the reasons that made you... Uh, uh, come up with this uh, brilliant initiative. Uh, there were reasons that sparked uh, this idea to you both. Uh, you as a student uh, earlier before, uh, you had a problem with, te with a teacher uh, and yeah. uh, things looked so complicated to you that was created by that particular teacher. She wasn't professional enough. She gave you hard time and she made you feel like you do not qualify for studying the English language and uh, uh, you had difficulty uh, acquiring information and acquiring the language just because of this teacher. And ever since that time, you decided to make difference in your life and change that particular bad experience that you had back then as a student, which I'm sure many other students uh, might have it in some uh, uh, international schools or private schools. Usually the teacher uh, is uh, qualified uh, or is assessed according to a totally different criteria than the uh, um, um, official one. Well, actually, so tell us about your experience. Uh, you know, it's a little bit funny because I wasn't really good in English at all when I was a child. Uh, until like uh, secondary school, I was a failure in English. I couldn't actually recognize the difference between the alphabet, you know, mm. I couldn't like the know. The phonics. Mm. Everything, I did not know English. I actually, sometimes I failed in the English subject many times and it was like very scary for me when I went to my parents and I told them that, well, I don't get like high grades in English. And it was a little bit funny how I improved in English is because of, you know, English series and I had to watch it like I, I loved an Engli a particular English series because, you know, like I was a teenager and I liked it. You felt it. you were qualified, but there was something wrong in school. 
with the way you were taught. I know, actually, I wasn't confident at all when mm. I was a child because, you know, like the school system at that time and these teachers were a little bit tough. And if I didn't understand English, then this must be because of me. I'm stupid. I'm not capable of learning a new language. So the teachers at that time, they did not give me, you know, the space to learn in my own way. And, you know, I, I learned in a very difficult way because, you know, not all students learn exactly in the same way. Of course. Yeah, there is like multiple intelligence. Everyone has their own way. You cannot ask a fish to fly. So what happened is this. I spent years in school capable of learning English. Mm. And after that, you know, in secondary school, I really, you know, I was a teenager and I loved this particular English series. And I was watching it like all the time, repeatedly. The first time I would see it like uh, with translation and after mm -hmm. that I would just uh, try to see the same episode again and again without the Arabic translation. Mm -hmm. So what happened is that I started to feel that uh, my English started to get better and the funny thing is that I use actually the Nile TV channel to get better in English because you know like I, there were some programs but at that's that good to hear. Yeah, that's, that's really strange. Uh, that's really uh, achieving uh, some aims even inside Egypt because we're supposed to be delivering a message to the Western world and the Western media. And uh, yes. it's really nice to know that Egyptians also are following. Uh, yes, mm, I, I was watching benefiting. it, and uh, you know, I, I was watching it when I was in secondary school, and I remember there were programs that had the English transcript written. So I would like start to take some notes with um, new vocabulary expressions, and my English started improving. Mm. And I started to feel more confident when I uh, when I go to school and speak in English, and you know I started to get better grades. Mm. But I still really hated teaching at that time. You know, mm. like yeah, my English started to get better. So when I went to college, uh, you know, uh, Tennessee, or you know, like when I have to go to choose which of the colleges that match my score in secondary school. So what happened is this, that I did not get really, um, you know, you, I got a high grade enough, okay, to choose one of the faculties that are related to languages. So mm. there was like Faculty of Arts, Faculty of Education, Alison, all of these. So I decided to, co to go to Faculty of Education, although that I was not really much into teaching. And that was like a very strange because, you know, like, why would I go there? I did not even like teaching at that time. Mm. until I went there and the first year in college uh, it was really fun for me because they had a lot of presentations going on I have to go and present and I'm a very shy person uh, I don't really like to um, to stand in front of people and talk and you know I, I get this adrenaline rush and I hesitate uh, but I still have this till now by the way you look perfectly uh, well to Thank me. you, but you know, like in the beginning of everything related to speaking in public, I'm a very shy person, but you know, I manage. Mm. Uh, so what happened is that I started to love doing presentations, even if it scares me, I love the idea of, uh, you know, being... Challenging spirit. Yes, mm. it was like, I'm always scared, but I'm always fighting my fear. Mm. And so I started to like presentations, and the second year we had something called uh, micro teaching classes. Mm. Micro teaching classes is about, you know, like uh, I pretend to be a teacher in a school and my colleagues pretend to be students and I start teaching something to them and then our professors give us uh, feedback. Mm. I remember the first time I had to make like uh, micro teaching, I spent like a week preparing for the lesson because I did not want to be like humiliated in front of people. And I started to get my, uh, you know, uh, toys in front of me and talking to them. And I get my parents. Mm. And, you know, my parents did not speak English, but they would just, like, sit there and <laughs> pretend like Being you're listening. supportive, only supportive. Yes, and me. they were like, yeah, go girl. And they were very supportive to me. Mm. Um, and so I did the presentation that day. And then I started to, like, not to hate it. I started to, like, like it a mm. little bit. And then I went to the third year, and that's when I actually started to fall in love with teaching. Mm. Um, you know, like from complete hatred to the field of teaching into loving it too much that I'm doing it for 10 years now, and I'm still Excellent. loving it more and more. Uh, I went to a school. Uh, we have teaching practice when uh, faculty of education students go to real schools, real students, and we teach them. Mm. 
So at that time, you know, like imagine like that was uh, 10 years ago or something, students were really difficult to deal with. Why? Uh, the girls were like, uh, you know, very energetic, hyperactive. They are not, you know, they don't like authority. They don't like the student teachers, us, you know, because usually they feel like we're there to force them to do something. So um, a lot of troubles happened, actually, and many students would actually get violent with the student teachers, you know, mm. the, the teachers coming from faculty education, the undergrad. Um, so I had to learn to speak their language, you know, like to sit next to them before the class starts and talk to them like, so what kind of makeup do you use or did you see this movie? Mm. And I started to build rapport, you know, mm. like to talk to them, to break the ice so they would start to, you know, to like me a little bit. And then when I had to go there in front of them to teach them for the first time, they would never listen to a teacher. Let sure. me tell you this, they never listen. Mm. So uh, what I did is this, I was preparing a story and I started to draw things on the board, characters with funny names and I started to tell a story. And suddenly the girls who were talking to each other and actually ignoring me completely, they started to stop a little bit and look at me. They wanted to know where I'm going with this story. Mm. And in this particular moment, I started to understand that a teacher can actually make a difference if he or she knew how to deal with the students. How not to reach also. Exactly. Okay. Yes. It's not just about being violent and forcing them to stop to listen to the knowledge they are given, but mm. actually to reach out to them as human beings with needs. And I started to ask them questions about the story I'm telling. And they started to respond, give opinions, and they were like, they suddenly forgot that they are in a school and that I'm a teacher and they are students in a class. And they started to talk to me like humans, talking to each other, giving opinions. And I fell in love with teaching. Mm. And here I am. That's a very important success story, and it's uh, very inspiring also. Thank you. Um, uh, among the stops that I would like to uh, go back to again, which is you talked about the multiple intelligence and uh, teaching a fish to fly. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Usually we don't see many teachers or many schools attaining that notion or real in full realization of that meaning, uh, though that this is the core of uh, teaching. I mean, the multiple intelligence of students. St students, uh, 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 Mr. Muhammad, develop at different levels. Uh, you cannot teach a fish to fly. It is a very inspirational quote, which uh, reflects lots of meanings. I want you to elaborate on this and also talk to us about the multiple intelligence, which is the base and foundation of any uh, good and real education. Why do we here in Egypt, uh, in Egyptian schools, and some Western schools also, we're not talking about Finnish schools uh, or schools in Malaysia, for example, or British schools in England, or some of the excellent experiences in the field of education. We're talking about, uh, I mean, the normal uh, mistakes that are committed in the field of education that might cause later on fatalities and catastrophes and cause very bad experiences to students that they completely fail. And they're not responsible for that. It's the people in the educational process who are not in full realization of the multiple intelligence process. Talk to us about it. Yeah. Uh, one of the most important modules in, uh, the teacher should know is the multiple intelligences and the learning styles. What no? are the multiple intelligences? Multiple intelligences are around nine uh, types of intelligences. Please, if you some, could elaborate yeah, on this. Some people learn by, they, they have natural intelligence. They can uh, check the, the nat nature and uh, how the moon uh, look and how the, how the sun looks and, and so on. They learn by following the nature and all uh, phenomenon they, they see. Uh, the, uh, some people have uh, verbal intelligence, uh, some people have uh, other types of intelligence. I'm like logical, logical intelligence. intelligence. I'm not the, the educational person, I am into the business more. Uh, mm. I know some uh, about learning styles and multiple intelligence through uh, attending with Basma in her classes and uh, making her videos. Uh, I'm into videotaping, uh, marketing, sales, web development. Mm. Basma is the person to be asked about all education. Mm. She, she has educational background and she's the one who trains the trainers. 
I, well, I'm I going to get the back then if more. this, if, if she could uh, better yeah. elaborate on the multiple intelligence, then I'm going to get to uh, Mrs. Abdel Hamid uh, uh, on the multiple intelligence. But it, go, going back to you, if you could tell us, how did you found this uh, initiative? How did the idea spark? I mean, uh -huh. what did you think as a business developer uh, doing this uh, initiative as the very first uh, one of its own right here in the yes. Middle East? Wasn't it a very scary uh, idea to be able to both of you only as to my knowledge you are the only two members yeah. of yeah, this so initiative so, so um, probably it could be a little bit uh, more uh, um, uh, scary or uh, challenging or maybe uncertain to be able to come up with an initiative like that yeah i work in the in this field of business development since four years now and since uh, that time, I, I was always planning to start my own initiative or to start my own company. But I didn't have the right idea. Uh, one of um, our rides, me and Basma, we were uh, having a bike ride. And I was telling her about this. I have a dream of uh, initiating my own project and being uh, my own uh, boss. Uh, she shared with me her idea or her passion about training the teachers. She has a passion about teaching uh, because teaching students English, this um, develops their future. Their English opens many doors that their certificates can't open. So, so she was very passionate about teaching, but she wants to leave more uh, our better legacy. So she wants to train the teachers how to teach. Uh, this means if she can teach 10 or 15 uh, students in her class, to teach them English. She can now teach 15 teachers how to teach English and uh, they, they can pass this knowledge or teach their students in other classes so she can multiply the, uh, her legacy or multiply her uh, impact and mm -hmm. this legacy uh, can be uh, in, in life even after she passes. Uh, from here we started the initiative, we started the project. Basma wanted to make it as offline workshops because she uh, wanted to meet students, meet the teachers and talk to them and have rapport with them. I was trying to convince her for the online content. Online content never dies. The online content is always there, accessible by everybody, not, not just in, in Cairo, but all, in all governorates in Egypt and not just in Egypt, but all the Arab region. And we, uh, our courses are in English, so we can reach other uh, nations and other people in other countries. Uh, there are many countries who are studying English. Yani the, uh, their English is, the English is not their first tongue or their first language. Mm. Uh, like in China, they, they study English. Uh, what some of our uh, followers are from our English teachers in China, our English teachers in India. So they are following our online courses to learn how to teach, teaching methodologies, classroom management, understanding students' needs, all the modules about English teaching. Mm -hmm. the, the initiative started from uh, matching our dreams. Mm -hmm. I have a dream of initiating my, my business and apply all what I learned in business and marketing and sales in my own project. And Basma had the passion of teaching uh, English to uh, teaching the teachers of English and qualifying them to the, the market. And then the idea developed, we started it in uh, 2015. We started, the idea came uh, in February uh, 2015 and we launched it in May 2015. And now uh, it's three years. Uh, the idea, w when we started the idea there, it wasn't uh, as we have it now. It was just online courses on our uh, channel uh, online. And then that's it. But now we have online courses, offline workshops, recruitment portal, online forum, all of these services to empower English teachers everywhere. We don't just qualify them by uh, some modules like teaching methodologies, assessment, new trends and techniques in TEFL. We don't just give them this, but our online courses have also the soft skills they need, like teacher leadership, uh, critical and creative thinking, time management, these soft skills are also essential for English teachers. Mm. More than this, we have a recruitment portal to connect the English teachers with, with their uh, potential employers. The English teachers uh, go to, goes to the recruitment portal and they fill their own account with all the details, experience, and everything. 
and uh, we we take this database to the employers, employers like uh, training centers, universities, nurseries, schools, any employer that will need an English instructor. Mm. They can filter all the database by everything they need. Uh, for example, they need someone who graduated from a specific college, uh, lives in a specific country or a specific city, has a, cer a certain certificate, certain uh, number of experience, uh, uh, number of years of experience. They can filter them and get the best candidates so they can contact them and employ them at uh, their institutes. This was the recruitment portal. In addition, we have the forum, online forum, to gather all English teachers to share experience, knowledge, uh, teaching materials, teaching ideas, experiences with different ages, experiences with, di with different institutes or different uh, entities they work with. Mm. So we have uh, an Engl online English teachers community. We qualify them and employ them. This can empower them more and this can open new opportunities for, for all English teachers. Hopefully. Excellent. But how did, uh, uh, if you can allow me, uh, I could uh, continue with Mr. Mohammed uh, Basma. Uh, how was this initiative raised? I mean, that is a very uh, uh, a curious question because yeah. with all that abilities and all those ideas and everything and goals, how did it first uh, was, was raised? I mean, were you supported by someone else, inspired by another international uh, initiative? Mm -hmm. Who inspired you to be able to come up with this uh, brilliant initiative? It was very challenging. I, I was telling you now, where we started by online courses. Mm. We had no experience in online <laughs> courses at all. No logistics or no skills. Uh, the idea was that I want to be uh, to, to have online courses because online co uh, online content is better, and videos was trending and started the, the trend from 2015 and maybe uh, before this by two or three years. So I decided we need to start it as online videos. Basma had a cha very challenging uh, story with this. She hated standing in front of cameras. She st she stutters. She doesn't what she doesn't know what to say. She forgets her own name in front of the camera. Yeah, that's the truth. She doesn't look yeah. like so at all. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, well, you haven't seen the beginning three years you ago. You've come a long way. You look like yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> the first video, we, we videotaped it more than eight times because mm -hmm. of some mistakes in, in the English. That's not too much. Yeah. That could be average, but... <laughs> more, more than this, uh, when I could convince Basma uh, to stand in front of the camera because now you can reach all people in all uh, countries in Egypt. Uh, you will not have to repeat the same workshop. You will not have the ability to, to repeat the workshop more, many times. And we need to reach uh, people in, uh, in, in regions. In rural areas, yes. in informal settlements. Oh, that was actually going to be my second question yeah. to you, Basma. Uh, usually, uh, when we talk about education and how uh, is it, it, it's deteriorating or declining the quality of education, like back in the 60s or 70s, it is, was way much better, unfortunately. Um, uh, 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 things or difficulties like that are sometimes resolved in, inter on, in international schools or private schools when you pay more money, yeah. though that you don't get even the good service. But with public schools, things have a, a little bit uh, 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 taken a, a, another turn or uh, there are more difficulties, maybe because of the... Uh, salaries of the uh, teachers, maybe because of the teachers themselves and how they are assessed and everything. Talking about the schools in informal settlements, in rural areas, in villages, what are the challenges uh, you people as experts and very much interested and dedicated to that particular field, did you find it in uh, uh, these areas, I mean, over there in villages, uh, in um, uh, uh, far-fetched places, where you could see uh, no schools or uh, in informal settlements uh, in rural areas. Uh, what, ch what challenges did you meet? Uh, well, actually, what challenges do the teachers usually meet is mm. that uh, they always have the excuse of we cannot get qualified enough to, to get better salaries, to teach our students in better ways, because they say, like, for me to get a good TAFL course, I have to move from my place, you know, like it could be a very far city from Cairo to Cairo because Cairo has most of the universities that offer courses in mm. Tafel. 
So they would say like, okay, we don't have enough time, we don't have uh, effort enough or money enough to go and take these courses. Mm. So what happens is this, uh, we're trying to let these people stop making mistakes to become better teachers for our students. So what happens is that we make the online courses and the online courses are there. All they have to do is just to have a computer and an internet access, that's it. And they can watch the videos and they can interact on the forum. And so they would not have, you know, like, I, I cannot do it anymore, or there aren't enough resources. But actually, no, there are resources just there in front of you. Go and watch the videos, go and ask us questions. This is one of the things that we do. Um, on the personal level is that if any of the teachers have any problems uh, in their own classroom, a classroom management problem, they would come and ask us, like, for example, one of the most common problems that the, the teachers face is that um, I have to use the mother tongue inside the classroom. So no matter what you tell them, like, how are you supposed to teach the students mm. English using Arabic? So they speak their native language or teaches yes. the Arabic language? Yes. So like 90% oh. of the class is in Arabic. So how come the students at the end will learn English? So they would not know how to deal in this situation. So we make videos to respond to this problem. We make videos on how to use uh, or how to teach English using only English. So they come and watch the video and then they send us their feedback like, uh, okay, we tried to apply this technique and it started to work, but the other technique did not work. And so we see how the problem goes with them. So we're sort of like communicating with them from a distance, but a lot of our teachers who follow us, they are coming from different governorates, not just from Cairo. And some of them are actually outside Egypt. We have people who are uh, teachers who are Syrian, Iraqi, uh, some teachers who are like Egyptian teachers, but they are teaching now in China and India, and they communicate with us on our page, telling us the kind of problems that they face and how they can overcome them. Mm. That's a very good job. Going back to you, Mr. Mohammed, and talking about uh, your initiative, uh, you have come a long way and uh, you have uh, uh, progressed uh, to a great... How long have you been on? You uh, people. It's three years now. Three years. That's yeah. a very little time. But also you are following or following the footsteps of the UN Sustainable Development Pro yeah. uh, pr uh, Program uh, uh, for the educational process. Uh, tell me in what way? Yeah. Explain to us. Uh, the United Nations have the Sustainable Development Goals, 17 goals for the new uh, millennium. So we are supporting three of these uh, Sustainable Development Goals. The first one of them is the quality education. We are trying to develop the, the educational process through qualifying the teachers because they are the most important element, as we said before. And then uh, the, the second uh, sustainable development goal we are supporting is the quality, the quality work or economic growth for individuals. When we qualify the, the teachers for the, their work, they have better careers, they have better opportunities in their field. And we, we provide them with the, the, the recruitment portal. There we, uh, we can find jobs for them and we connect them with their employers so they can have better careers, uh, better than the ones they have. Mm -hmm. And the last sustainable goal we, ha we have is the uh, reduced inequalities between women and, and men. We qualify uh, women in particular because most of the English teachers or, or most of the teachers are women um, and because they are uh, dealing with students, uh, especially the school students, primary school, uh, they need to have uh, uh, female teachers more than the male teachers. They are more patient, they have uh, the sense of motherhood to their ch uh, children or their students uh, in this case. So we qualify the, the girls, we qualify them to be English instructors, we provide them with uh, job opportunities uh, through our uh, recruitment portal. So we support the three of these uh, sustainable goals, quality education, economic growth, and uh, uh, gender, gender equality. equality or reduced inequalities between uh, mm -hmm. boys and girls. Boys and girls. Yeah. Uh, going back to you, Basma, uh, uh, um, talking about the multiple intelligence. It's a very important uh, stop in the life or a stage in educational process. It's the core, I mean the foundation of the whole 
education process. Uh, why do we always have problem in schools with the multiple intelligence process? Uh, why is it applied in the ro totally wrong way in some schools and creates catastrophes uh, with, with students? It would uh, repel them from education uh, entirely. Explain to us, uh, first, of, uh, first of all, define the multiple intelligence and then explain to us how does it uh, happen in the right way. Okay, uh, the, the problem happens in schools is because teachers expect all of their students to be, to be all the same. They have the same personality, the same way of thinking, the same type of intelligence. Like for example, uh, have you met someone who is like very good, for example, in farming, but they cannot learn languages? Or someone else who is very good with languages, but um, they cannot do anything with their hands? So expecting people to be like a copy-paste from each other, that's what creates the problem. And creating only one criteria to assess kids, exactly. like the A-plus student who yeah. is good and uh, who yes. can memorize and who can uh, Written exams uh, calculate uh, mathematical uh, pr uh, problems and uh, calculations yes. and all this. Yes, that's a true. So expecting that the people would all have the same skills, the same way of thinking, and get the same score at the end. Like if I did not get a high score in English because I could not write well in the exam, so this means I'm stupid. I'm not capable of, you know, like understanding like my friends in class who got better score so multiple intelligence is uh, you know it tells us how to deal with students in different ways how to teach the same material but in so different ways so all of our students would have their um, you know th their learning style or they would be able to understand what they are learning and at the same time it fosters all of the other types of intelligence there are nine types of intelligence some of them are like uh, logical intelligence or mathematical intelligence do you know the people who are very good with math with numbers they can just do it right away in a very easy way mm. like for example when you go to the supermarket and you're like confused how to calculate things that's me <laughs> yeah that's me too <laughs> like a lot of people are like this <laughs> but you find the supermarket man he just does it like that and sometimes he's illiterate yeah so he does not know the alphabet, but he's very good with numbers. He has mathematics. I've always lived my life wondering, how does that happen? He I mean, how can words. people <laughs> come up with some uh, complicated calculations like 16 plus uh, 15 you know, or yeah, 20 like plus 4? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, these can be very confusing to us, but to these people, they just do it very simply. So mm. these people have logical or mathematical intelligence. They were born like that? I mean, just a, 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 well, a, uh, a question. Well, okay, well, uh, well, I don't know much about how the, the theory came from, but, uh, you know, this is a skill that you can mm. foster because this is the multiple intelligence idea is that uh, we all have the nine types of intelligence. You mm. have mathematical intelligence, but like your linguistic intelligence, you know, okay. they are like levels. Mm. For example, your English is very good. You can learn another language, a third or mm. a fourth. You can do it very easily. Yeah because of your linguistic ability you can do it very easily and the more languages you learn the better you get in learning new languages so uh, this is a skill you foster so when we teach in class we have to match all of our students learning styles all of their intelligence if we're teaching them a piece of of grammar for example we have to use uh, activities that would help the students with different types of intelligence all understand the material when we assess the students we have to make different types of assessment not all of the assessment should be like written exam at the end if you don't write then you lose 100 percent of uh, the score the the work that you mm. have done but some of the assessment that we can use is games and activities and role plays all of these things can make the, for example, the kinesthetic uh, people, you know, people like me, I used to have a problem in learning any, you know, anything in school because I'm a kinesthetic learner. I'm someone who likes to use uh, her hands and I like to jump around, to move mm -hmm. around. I cannot sit, you know, I'm one of those students it's, it's, it's who cannot yeah, sit. That's a very common, uh, I mean, uh, trait yes, that's between trait. most of the students. I mean, that's, that's very normal. Yeah, like, you know, this is a, a bodily intelligence. People who like 
uh, to use their body while they are learning. You know, the, those are the people who are actually very good in, in sports. They can practice sports. If you ask them, you know, if you ask me to do something right now, go, you know, like jump around, I would just do it gladly. But if you ask me like to sit down for a long time, you So might, you learn better while you're jumping around. Yes, you might actually <laughs> find me jumping here on the sofa. I'm actually but doing it right now. <laughs> let me, if you could allow me, Muhammad, I need to uh, elaborate with Basma on another important front, which is uh, sometimes we hear uh, quotes like um, um, educational difficulties. I mean, children with educational problems, overcoming educational problems, and, and then um, uh, things have developed into uh, go and see a doctor to sort out your kid's educational problems. This is a kid with an educational problem. Uh, uh, is there something uh, so, uh, I mean, cold like that? I mean, you, you can be going through difficulties. For example, I'm a hyperactive person. Mm. I cannot sit in one place as a student. And of course, you've heard about the attention deficit disorder. Yes, ADD. of course. I mean, and that, that, that uh, was revealed later on to be a big lie because uh, that is a notion that was created uh, in the, uh, um, the new millennium uh, that was really very common back then in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, but because of but took a the way diff totally yes. different notion. Yes, because you know the teacher expect, expects me to learn exactly the same way as Muhammad. Muhammad, for example, he can simply sit and listen to a lecture and take note, and he would be very okay. For mm. me, I would just sleep. I would not be able to focus That's or to be give yeah, okay language people. <laughs> so. I, I have to be doing something. I have to be asked to move around. Muhammad, mm. for example, he doesn't like to move around. He just likes to sit there, listen in a very mm. quiet way. So it, am I right and he is wrong or is he right and am I wrong in the way we're learning? No, we're just different in how we perceive information. So the teacher should teach what, what he's teaching, the material he's delivering. He should have a time to explain it in an organized way. So students like Muhammad would be able to write, to listen, to take notes, and people like me can get the chance to have fun and move around and learn their own way. Mm. Uh, of course, that is fun to take notes. <laughs> that have inspired me uh, to ask you, Muhammad, uh, with all this uh, rich information and experience that Basma have, uh, she could give a lot of support to the Ministry of Education, to the whole educational process in Egypt, uh, spreading awareness campaigns to schools about uh, how to instruct teachers to deal with students with uh, educational difficulties. Did that uh, idea um, uh, cross your mind, uh, people, as a team? Because you would be, it, 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 I mean, it, um, very helpful to um, the teaching process in different schools and particularly in, uh, in uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the schools, uh, the private schools or the international schools because they, they're very arrogant when it comes to the education. They know the, what they're doing and when you look over to the results, you don't see that uh, this is really yeah. happening. This idea is always in my mind and I try to pursue it before but it didn't work well. And I hope from this program and your mm. channel to reach to someone in the mm. Ministry of Education, we are ready to help or to do whatever we can do. We are ready to go to schools uh, everywhere. We can start small uh, by small places or small uh, schools in Cairo. And then we can go to Giza and uh, bigger Cairo and Alex and the main, uh, the main governorates. And then we can go to other regions in Egypt, we are trying to do this. We are trying to help in the, uh, not just the private schools, but before the private schools, the public schools, to reach to uh, the people who can't afford uh, good quality education or what they think it's good quality education because some people or some English instructors, even in the private sector or the international schools, they lack the essential skills of English teaching. They lack this and we have it some international schools just employ foreigners to to be instructors even if they don't have the educational background and how to deal with That's different true. types. That's yeah. true. Mm. We, we face this issue and some uh, English instructors, Egyptian English instructors in some uh, international schools, they complain to us because they are not uh, working as main teachers, they are co-teachers to foreign teachers who don't have the educational background and how to deal with different types of uh, students, how to understand the students' needs, 
and so on. They, they have good English. Yeah, no one can say mm. they are native speakers, so they have good English. But they need to have educational background. But not, not necessarily uh, the right phonics. Yeah, yes. They could speak slang. slang but again, yes. because we're running out of time, the reason I asked you that question is that uh, the question is for both of you. Uh, because uh, you would be able profoundly to sort out many uh, uh, problems, issues that have been there for a long time. Like uh, students who are failing in, on different subjects, like uh, uh, methods of teaching, like uh, uh, private uh, lessons, why uh, uh, students resort to private lessons because they do not understand in class from that particular teacher. And when you try to spread this awareness of teaching uh, while you have in your background the multiple intelligence, then you will be able to deliver the notion to everyone uh, around. Yes, so, uh, actually that's true because, uh, you know, like uh, there are a lot of centers in Egypt that are promoting for a very wrong notion mm -hmm. that uh, you can become an English teacher only if your English is good. That's why uh, before we had a lot of foreign teachers uh, because, you know, their English is their native tongue, okay? So what happened is that they don't have any teaching background, they haven't studied anything related to teaching methodologies, they come to classes and things go really badly with the students, so students would hate English. What happens with uh, right now is that centers would say like, you can come study with us some levels in English and after that you're going to become an English teacher with us. So people would just imagine that if my English is good, I'm capable of teaching. And this is actually not true at all because there are, are uh, a lot of skills of that people should know about teaching. Um, they have to know about the teaching methodologies and they have to know how to apply them in classroom because it's not just about theories and memorizing and just write it for an exam. They have to know that we have to uh, teach English as one integrated part. We cannot just teach speaking or reading or writing and all of them in, you know, in different uh, slots, but we have to integrate them together. We have to teach teachers that how to handle classroom management problems, um, mm -hmm. how to learn new th about the new trends. All of these are skills that they should learn about as teachers. Mm. That's excellent and very inspiring. Actually, I had so many other uh, uh, elements that I needed to ask about, but actually we're running out of time. Okay. I really enjoyed really every single moment out of this very important uh, edition about developing good education. And uh, the uh, invitation ex is extended again for you, both of you, to kindly come over and uh, provide us with uh, 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 updates uh, throughout the uh, educational year. Uh, on your um, activities and how you have developed with your initiative and all the, if you ever think of the awareness campaigns also, yeah. Yeah, we could be very helpful. Yes, we're going to work on this. Right. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Mrs. Basma Abdel Hamid, English and uh, TEFL instructor, and Mr. Mohammed Abu Lainin, business developer, and both of you members of the TEFL's initiative uh, program. May I call it? Uh, an initiative or a startup, actually. Startup. Yeah. Thank definitely. you very much yeah. for coming yeah. over you. to Windows and Current Affairs, and I really appreciate it, and awaiting you for another episode to be able to uh, uh, annex 